everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s and 90s G.I. Joe tour review. And today I'm going to be taking a look at the G.I. Joe team's fourth Navy SEAL, the 1994 Shipwreck. Better known as Shipwreck version 2, or even Battlecore Series 2, figure number 3. Unfortunately, this version of Shipwreck our famous Navy sailor from 1985, does not make any cartoon or comic book appearances wearing this outfit. First, let's take a look at Shipwreck version 2's accessories. And boy, does he come with a lot of accessories, more than he can hold. But some of these are generic accessories which would have come on a plastic frame. Um, some people would actually call this a plastic tree or a sprue. But these were generic and actually two other figures actually came with the same uh, plastic frame which had all these accessories. The accessories on this frame were the pistol which was from 1988 Shockwave, the large rifle which came with the 1990 Bullhorn, and both a knife and a submachine gun, which came from the 1988 hit-and-run figure, as well as a generic black figure stand. So these weapons would be exactly the same ones issued with the 1993 Balakor figures cross-country and roadblock. However, there is one difference which I've already noted in my 1988 Hit and Run video, and that is with the submachine gun, better known as the Colt M635. From what I've seen of the 1993 and 1994 figures which came with accessories molded onto frames, is that the sculpting is really very soft and kind of sloppy. Here is a 1988 Hit and Run's gun, for instance, and you can see that even tight little detail, like the barrel nut in between the uh, handguard and the action of the uh, submachine gun, is there. But it's not on Shipwreck's gun, and the reissuing doesn't stop there. He also comes with a pair of flippers, which, while they were uniquely done in black plastic, they were originally from the 1992 version 2 Eels. Even though they do have unique mold numbers on the inside, there is no left or right to either of the flippers, so you don't have to worry about trying to match them up if you're trying to find accessories on the aftermarket. It seems like almost every Balcor figure came with some type of a missile launcher or spring-loaded gimmick, and Shipwreck version 2 was no exception to that. The missiles, with his launcher, you got two of them, were actually a pretty standard sculpt from 1993. A lot of uh, figures came with this type of missile, even if they didn't come with the same missile launcher, which is pretty fascinating because Shipwreck's missile launcher is unique to him. It was first issued with this figure and was never reissued again. Of course, like any typical spring-loaded missile launcher, you have a little tab at the back, Click it backwards and you fire off a missile. And you can do that again. Just uh, pop this right in and fire it off. One very interesting thing is uh, it doesn't have a typical handle that a lot of the other missile launchers had. Instead it had this um, uh, horizontal handle thing here. So you had a choice of they're holding it like this and kind of holding it above the shoulder or holding it low slung around the hip. And, well, that's really the only options of it looking good in the hands of an action figure, which doesn't have swiveling wrists. And last but not least, Shipwreck version 2 comes with his scuba mask and integrated oxygen hoses. To detach the oxygen hoses, you just pull them out of these holes, which are molded into his chest here. And the hoses are all one sculpt with the scuba mask, so you can just pull the whole thing off. The scuba mask itself was actually a unique accessory to the 1994 Shipwreck. And when Shipwreck was reissued in the late 1990s and early 2000s, this is one of the few items which got re-released with him. Which is really nice because, well, because of the holes and the very odd nature of the pegs at the ends of the oxygen hoses themselves, 
are actually a rather unique accessory which would really only fit this figure. This sculpt of Shipwreck was re-released in 1998 as part of the Toys R Us exclusive Navy Assault Unit 3-pack and again in 2001 in a 2-pack with Sidetrack. This is an easy way to get his unique scuba mask. Shipwreck version 2's color scheme of an all-over grey scuba suit with little details of black and pops of silver on his chest are really very realistic and militaristic in an era of 1993 and 94 where a lot of the other action figures he would share shelf space with were really bright and had really odd details. And even though the details on him are really very businesslike for a military figure, he is still, well, shipwreck. He's a very oddball character and you would expect him to have something kind of strange sculpted onto him or some little painted on detail, but no, he is just a uh, very commando-like, um, seal-looking like figure. As a matter of fact, the previous seal, the 1991 Tracker, looks like a basketball player in, um, in comparison to this guy, which I will compare him to. Interestingly enough, his waist and his legs are actually borrowed from the 1986 wetsuit figure, just recolored and don't even look at all like they belong on another figure. They really are integrated very well into this new shipwreck figure. And as I mentioned in my top 10 G.I. Joe figures of the 1990s, where I actually praised this version of shipwreck, one thing that I would do is just kind of get rid of the uh, missile launcher. And look at all his accessories. They're mostly just guns and knives, typical for what you would find, not only for a seaborne figure, but for a figure which would make combat on land as well. Well, sea, air, and land, which is what a lot of other Navy SEAL figures in the G.I. Joe line kind of don't do very well. Well, one question you may or may not be asking is, where are Shipwreck's scuba tanks? You know, the stuff he needs to breathe underwater? Well, according to the file card, and yes, starting in 1992, the file card actually itemized not only the accessories, but some of the details on the figures. This device on his chest is actually a Top Secret Oxygen Rebreather Unit. So basically, this is his oxygen tank. It looks like it holds about, I don't know, two minutes worth of air, but at least they tried. He also has a cool little dagger sculpted onto his forearm here. There is one criticism I have to make now that I actually own this figure, is that I don't really like how these uh, holes for the oxygen mask hoses are actually off-center because, well, as you can see, the hoses themselves are molded center. So you put the mask on his face there and it looks great, but then you try to put the hoses in to the holes and it just sort of knocks the whole mask out of place. The only variation I know of is whether or not Shipwreck's upper arms are painted. It seems the painted ones were made in China and the unpainted ones are made in Indonesia. This is either a result of Hasbro's new factory in Indonesia trying to find its footing or deliberate cost cutting. 1994 was a transition year for the packaging with early card designs looking like the 1993 blue red laser backgrounds. All toys issued later in the year would get the vertical G.I. Joe logo style. While Shipwreck was one of the earlier releases, he never got an updated style card in the US as the line was cancelled before a later year refresh. Here in Canada, all of the figures were technically later releases and all we got were the updated styles. It wouldn't be a 1994 Shipwreck Review video if I didn't mention Stinky Diver. As I mentioned in my Top 10 G.I. Joe Figures of the 1990s video, this figure was the basis for the character named Stinky Diver on the show Action League Now, a series of live action comedy shorts featuring action figures which premiered on Nickelodeon's Kablam, then spun off into their own show. Sticky Diver was the memorable lone wolf of the team and he was barely altered from the toy. Just red painted gloves, mid chest strap, calf tops and flippers. Making your own Stinky Diver is incredibly easy. In addition to the minor paintwork, place the mask backwards on his head after removing the hoses and you have a choice of missiles to make for his unaltered launcher. The harpoon version, the regular missile with a tip whittled into a hook, or the spear version, the regular missile with a triangular silver piece of cardboard glued to the tip. 
if you're really adventurous, you can make his younger brother, Stench Diver, with green painted highlights, or his whole family, using pink paint and Barbie blonde hair. And no, I still can't get over the fact that Hasbro let Burger King release a toy based on their fair use character that was based on their toy. And now to compare version 2 with version 1. In 1985, Shipwreck was your typical Navy sailor. Even though he was Chief Petty Officer and actually should have been wearing tan, we get the whole, you know, Navy fatigues, dungarees and blue work shirt type of deal. Of course, like I said before, he is supposed to be kind of an oddball character. So it's not uh, out of the ordinary for him to have like a parrot and uh, some weird armaments like this, um, I don't know, flintlock pistol or whatever it was supposed to be. Percussion pistol, I think it was. However, one thing I was always very curious about is why they changed his facial hair. Because here he has black facial hair and a very distinctive Fu Manchu style mustache. Whereas here it's sort of integrated with his beard, which he definitely doesn't have in this version. I mean, I guess you could say that he shaves now that he's a Navy SEAL or something like that. And there are certain figures which have changed their hair color, like the... Uh, 1986 to 1991 low light, for instance. As I've mentioned before, Shipwreck version 2 is the fourth Navy SEAL on the G.I. Joe team. So let's bring the other ones in. And here are the G.I. Joe Navy SEAL team members. Starting off with the 1983 Torpedo, the 1986 Wetsuit, of which there were two. Uh, 1986 also produced the Toys R Us exclusive Special Mission Brazil Silver Outfit version and 1991 Tracker. And as you can see, this is exactly what I mean by how Tracker looks a little bit strange as compared to all the other Navy SEAL members. However, like I said in his review, I think it was uh, justified because he is not a scuba diver like all the rest of them. Instead, he came with an inflatable boat, which means that he was an uh, overland tracking Navy SEAL personnel. However, it is very interesting that you can see the sort of evolution of the color styles, very subdued and militaristic in Torpedo, but then pops of orange in 1986, then going completely crazy in 1991, then going right back to the 1983 style of dark subdued colors. And here is a comparison to the Ryu sculpt from 1986 wetsuits, waist and legs. And personally, I kind of like the way they have done minimal stuff on Shipwreck's legs here because honestly it looks like they should have just left the tops of Wetsuit's knees alone here and just sort of started the uh, black color scheme from his calves downwards and not continue it up through his kneecaps here. So just who is Shipwreck's opposite number on the Cobra side? Well there wasn't any aquatic Cobra for 1994 but if you go back one year they did have the 1993 Balacor Eels or Eels version 3 which was just a slight retooling of the 1992 version of the Eels. Shipwreck's subdued grey and black color scheme actually looks pretty good in the 1994 Manta Ray boat since Hasbro intended them to be paired. However, if you don't like the neon green, there are plenty of later alternatives like the black 1997 Navy SEAL mission raft and the Army Green 2001 night landing craft. If you're looking for a 1994 shipwreck on the aftermarket, he is, like a lot of 1993 and 94 figures which come with a ton of accessories, a little bit hard to find and complete loose simply because of the amount. Now, simply because most collectors don't really put a big value on the 1993-94 figures. His, his actually value has gone so low that I would actually suggest that if you don't already have half of his accessories, you might consider buying one still sealed on the card because those will not be typically that much more expensive than a loose figure with all of his parts. However, if you want to be brave and get a whole loose figure, there are at least three things that you do have to look out for. Of course, his mask is often missing with loose figures, but it is something that you can find with really uh, later releases of Shipwreck. Of course, his uh, flippers were never released again, even though they are uh, a mold borrowed from another figure. The black plastic of this is kind of unique to his figure, as well as the missile launcher, which was unique and never reissued ever again. However, the rest of his accessories are borrowed from at least two other um, Balcor figures, so you can 
typically find those fairly easily. Of course, then there's the bowel stand, which some sellers often don't include with the accessories. They just consider this to be some type of a bonus or something. But again, unlike a lot of other 1993 and 94 figures, which came with kind of zany, unique colors to their um, generic frames, this one was just black plastic, and there are tons of black plastic original Hasbro bowel stands on the aftermarket. So you don't have to worry about which figure it originally came from. It's just a black bowel stand, and you can just put that in with the accessories if you consider that to be a complete figure with it. Honestly, I'm really surprised that this version of Shipwreck doesn't get more love because, well, I mean, not only is he the basis for Stinky Diver, which is, um, you know, uh, kind of a cult following, but the fact of the matter is, is he just looks so good. Originally been with the figures of the. Ah, now to go. As a matter of fact, because of the large. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.